I'm at the ages of nine, I was molested and raped by a man for a year. And um, that did a lot of damage to me because I was only nine years old, you know what I mean? And so, and I was bullied a lot in school and I just couldn't make any friends and no one liked me and all these different little things. So like it just, it shut my whole world out. And because of that, I started having seizures. Um, kids would make fun of me because of my seizures, which caused me just to continue to go on a downhill slope. Um, I eventually started hating life. I started hating God. Um, I started just cursing and hating everybody. By the age of 10, I attempted my first suicide attempt. You know, during ages of 11, 12, and 13, I was continuously in and out of mental hospitals, um, constantly, you know, threatening to kill myself, was constantly cutting myself. Um, it, it was just tragic because I just couldn't, I couldn't have friends. I just couldn't fit in. I couldn't, wasn't good enough or I wasn't this. And so that just played with my young mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just sucked. Um, by ages of 13, we moved houses and moved into Littleton. Um, I ran into a bad small group of kids that smoked weed and cigarettes and I got myself involved in that because it felt good. I wanted to be part of the cool kids or the bad kids or you know what I mean? Somewhere that I thought I fitted in, you know? And uh, so I still just couldn't, I just couldn't make friends, man. Started joining the wrestling team. That was cool, you know, just continuously, again, still in and out of hospitals. Between the ages of 15 and 16, I got sent to multiple like little rehab things or clinics. Went to one in San Diego, got kicked out of there. Went to the one in Utah, which was a wilderness program. You know, I was still causing trouble in there, ran away. And like anything I try to do to try to quote unquote help myself, just turn bad, <laughs> like all the time. Um, I was constantly like verbally abusive to my family. I would constantly bicker with my mom. I've had to be restrained multiple times because of my aggression. I'm punching trees, punching walls, punching holes in my wall, you know, just causing massive amounts of mischief. And because I started getting high, I'm starting to um, steal stuff and unlock cars, air out their tires, um, just do a whole bunch of bad things, you know what I mean? Made honor roll, joined the wrestling team, played football, swam during the summer, you know, continued to stay in sports, but I just wasn't happy. Didn't want nothing to do with anybody, didn't nothing want to do with my family. Um, sophomore year, I dropped out of high school, went to several different other little schools to try to get back on track and got kicked out of those. I just, I wasn't doing good, so then I officially dropped out and that was that. Um, on May 11th, 2017, I, um, my mom went to go take my sister to school and my buddies was with me. We just got done smoking weed and stuff. And uh, he, um, I told him, I looked at him and I was like, hey, I'm gonna go kill myself, bro. And um, my mom went to go take her to school and gave me enough time. I ran down in the basement. I already had cord braided and ready to go. Tied the noose and went in. And I remember looking back at my friend and was like, hey, this is it, bro, I'm done. And like, he didn't even, didn't even budge, didn't care. And I kicked the ladder from underneath myself and I died. Um, my mom came back and my little sister, who's five years younger than me, came back, opened the garage and I'm, I'm hanging from the rafters. And um, my mom, I can't tell you how she felt. She uh, she cut me down, cried to the neighbors, and the neighbors called the ambulance and stuff. And got to the hospital. I was eight minutes legally dead. No no brain recovery, no heart, nothing. And uh, so that I was on you know in the ICU. They had to like put these machine on you to like slow your try to bring your brain back and your heart back. And they had a machine on my heart to keep it beating. Um, and I was and then I finally woke up. And I was pissed. I was pissed that I lived. I was so mad. Like I wanted nothing. I wanted everything. I was like, finally my misery's gone. And instead, I got to live. And I was pissed out about it. Um, by this point, I've already started experiencing with meth, and um, from some buddies of mine. And uh, after I got out of the hospital, I stayed like a week in Denver Health as like a mental institute. Also later on that year, I found out that I had two more siblings. Cowie and Ali'i, and um, that's how I got in contact with my dad for the first time. I ripped him a new one for just leaving me high and dry my most of my life and leaving me with abandonment issues, and 
you know, not having my 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 dad in my life, you know. Uh, Cowie and Lily, I got to hang out with them for a little bit, and then their mom disowned me because of what I've been through in my past. So I got pushed out of their lives. So like, just life was just horrible. After the hospital, I continued to do meth and do any drug that I could possibly get entwined with. I've done acid, shrooms, molly, ecstasy, DMT, PCP, you know what I mean? You name it, I've done it, heroin. And so, you know, I've done all those and just continue to do meth. By the age of 18, my mom was like, hey, either you're gonna do this or you're not. I chose to go to the streets. Uh, I started off in my like own little neighborhood for a little bit and um, after that, I moved on to downtown. I was just a straight fiend. I would do anything other than sell my body to get high. You know what I mean? I didn't care what weather it was. I didn't care this or that. I just wanted to be high. And um, at that time, I was shooting meth. You know, I never really smoked it, so I used an IV needle and just put masses of amounts of dope into my veins. And um, throughout all that, just continue to like out hurt people, man. Uh, I was, you know, there's a dude that looked at me wrong and I took my skateboard trucks and hit him over the back of the head and then whipped out a baton and just beat his head in until he finally walked off the block and I said, bro, if you ever come back, I'll kill you. And I meant it. And I seen him again and uh, he was like, hey, uh, you remember me? I was like, yeah. He's like, this is from you. And he had a scar from his forehead to the back of his head that hair can't grow back because he had to get surgery. And I was like, yeah, and? Like, I, you should you should leave, you know what I mean? Before that happens again. You know, and I just became, because I hated life so much and that I lived, I became very violent. Uh, you know, you look at me wrong or you do me dirty, I'm coming after you. You know, I've been pistol whipped, I've been robbed, I've been beaten up in my sleep, I've been stabbed, I've been this, this and that. You know what I mean? My scars on my face are from a bottle. You know, I've had like a Molotov cocktail thrown at me, I've you know? And so, you know, just because I've been through all these things and people out to get me, I was out to get them. I was bloodthirsty. And, you know, that's the scariest part is just knowing that you have that inner demon in you. You know what I mean? That you have that much hate and that much anger that you're willing to take another one, someone else's life for it. And by God's grace, I, no one was smart enough to give me a gun because I was freaking crazy on drugs. My mom will come see me once a week and take me out for a hot meal, give me hand warmers, clothes. And then uh, I tried to push her away. I was like, mom, I'm, I'm, your son's dead. Like, my name's Tweak. Like, don't call me Ty. Don't call me your son. Like, I don't want you ever to see me again. And then she's like, boy, you're my, you're my baby boy. And I, I'm, not, I'm not going anywhere. And uh, that for me, that hit it. You know, like, I couldn't. I just broke down crying because I didn't know, I like, what do you do with that? Just showing that, like, she, I've given her every reason to give up on me and she hasn't. I continued on the streets. You know, I lived with my buddy Trouble in his garage with his family and just continued to get high and steal from people, steal cars. And then eventually I started selling drugs. And then I started doing heroin. And next thing I know, I'm shooting up anything that could liquefy and go in my veins. Coke, Molly. Uh, meth, I would mix them all together, whatever. I just didn't care. You know, um, I never OD'd on heroin, thankfully. I've gotten really close. Um, but it's been, you know, it was rough. You know, I, I know what it's like to have nothing, no clothes. And then when you're homeless, everyone looks at you like you're a freaking alien and doesn't care whether you live or die. You know what I mean? You could ask for help and no one cares. You know what I mean? And so, like, I've been on both sides of the track. I know what it's like to have some stuff, and I definitely know what it's like not to. And um, it just sucked. It was horrible. Um, eventually, I finally got locked up in November of 2019, and I thought I was done. Ended up getting back out, and um, I wasn't done. I uh, lived at home, tried to work a job for a little bit, but I got right back in with the wrong people which led to me getting high again. The difference about me when I fell off this time is I didn't get as high. Instead, I just sold good good amount of drugs. You know what I mean? And because I sold good amount of drugs, I just kept the money flow and went and sold drugs and then I would sleep every night, go eat some real food. And because of that, like, 
I just I just slept every night. I was so done. I was tired of having to look over my shoulder all the time. Like that's no fun. It's no fun whether you're you're gonna get killed in your sleep or whether you're gonna have anything next to you when you wake up. You know, it's it's petrifying, bro. And you know, you're gonna get cold when it rains and you're gonna freeze when it snows and you don't have no warm place to go. You know, you don't have no dry clothes to put on afterwards. You don't have nothing. And because I moved so much, all I had was what was in my backpack and sometimes I didn't even have those. You know, so I was constantly just in misery. I've gotten pistol whipped, you know, dude came up to the car and was like, hey, I need everything. And like after that, that's when I told my mom, I was like, I'm gonna kill this dude. I'm done, I'm done. I'm gonna kill this dude. And she was just like, no, Ty, don't do that to yourself, you know? And then so, you know, it continued, and then finally, eventually, <sighs> April 25th of 2020, I finally got relocked up. Um, some dude randomly called the cops on me, and I was kind of like in a conversation with him, like, man, I'm ready to be done. And just out of God's grace, it's like, you're ready to be done, and got me locked up, which is where I needed to be. You know, that's how I see it, is God was like, I'm going to have this random dude call the police on him so he can go to jail so he can be safe, so his mom's heart is at ease, you know? And so I sat in Douglas for like about a week and just, you know, I, again, I attempted to try to and take my own life. I tried to take the towel and choke myself out. And um, I really didn't want to die, but I was just so done so, and so hurt and so mad at myself that I didn't, you know, I, I was just done. I threw in the towel. And so then they transferred me to Jefferson County Jail and, uh, that's where everything changed. Ended up in a pod with a guy that I didn't like and ended up getting a fight and kicking out of that got kicked out of there and moved to another pod where I met where I met my boy Trivi. You know, I just got out of fight, I'm just like a hot mess. And I seen how he worked out and then he led a prayer circle one night. And um he had a prayer circle about forgiveness and in that moment I lost everything. I just broke down crying and he came up to me, he's like, what's going on, my bro? I was just like, I'm hurting, bro, like, I need help. And I went up to them in the mob closet and was like, hey, bro, how do I do this? Like, how do I forgive? Like, how, how do I talk to God about this? Like, I feel so ashamed and so shameful. Like, what do I, you know, what do I do? Because I've had a heart in the heart my whole life of just hate and anger. And like every other emotion was numb to me. I was so mad at God and like any time my mom said that he loved me, I couldn't believe it. I was like, there's no way. Look what everything I've gone through. How does he love me? So then I tried to find it in other people and then I tried to find it in drugs. But my heart's always been looking to fill that void. But I couldn't come to myself to reason that God was it. So I've looked everywhere but, and the only last place I didn't look was God. And then when I heard that I was forgiven, and I've heard it before, but like there's a certain season, certain things hit, you know what I mean? And then one, to hear that I'm forgiven for hurting other people, for taking other people's car when maybe they had to take someone to the hospital, almost killing people, taking their stuff, getting high, disrespecting my family, and the people he told me that I'm supposed to be obedient to and I haven't, and told me that I'm still loved just as much and no less, turns everything. It's like, how? It's because he loves you that much. And when he took my heart and heart and turned it to flesh, man, it was just like transforming, allowing me to feel things again, allowing me not to be numb, allowing me not to hate. But he showed me who I had to forgive because it's holding me back. Yeah, you're forgiven, but make that first step of faith. That's faith right there, forgiving other people because then you're forgiven. And like knowing that I'm forgiven and that's one thing that's asked of me, what do I have to lose? Okay, I'll take that step. And everything changed. I don't hate the man that molested me no more. I pray for him. I want him to have a healthy, better life. The same reason why Jesus wants me to have a better life, because I'm forgiven. That's how love works. And that's, the most impactful thing in my life.